one big lesson that we that that we gleaned from this valley is that we allowed ourselves so this is huge y'all that we allowed ourselves the freedom permission patience and grace to feel those big negative emotions before again i've got you know and i'm i'm saying this next statement jokingly I've got multiple PhDs in stuffing and avoiding, right? If, if you want lessons in how to stuff and avoid your feelings, man, I have been doing that for a long time. <laughs> as long as Chuck, Chuck Taylors have been around. <laughs> Some of you are like, what's Chuck Taylor? Don't, don't sweat it. So give yourself the freedom, the permission, the grace, the space, the patience to feel those negative emotions that you are going to feel in, 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 in being an entrepreneur. Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you've hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. What is going on, entrepreneurs, leaders, and influencers? Thank you all so much for helping us get to over 8,000 downloads total in this journey. Super stoked. They had no idea, never thought that we would get there. So this is exciting. So again, thank you guys for those of y'all that are that have been watching and listening, whether it's the podcast or the YouTube channel or even our Facebook group. So this is going to be called the lessons from our most recent business and personal valley. And we're talking Sunday. So we're not talking three years ago, three weeks ago. We're literally talking Sunday. <laughs> so for those of y'all that own a business or have ever been entrepreneurs before, know that it is literally, we call it the entrepreneur roller coaster. And that's a, we're a big fan of that book also by Darren Hardy, the entrepreneur roller coaster. And I've got my notes here. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing here. So here's, here's what we do. We love helping entrepreneurs navigate the emotional journey of running a business and life by helping you grow your emotional awareness and intelligence. All right. Last episode was about a huge emotional growth hack, uh, which is community growing, growing your own emotional, you know, your emotional intelligence within community. And I, I gave five reasons, five areas and five, yeah, five benefits, if you will, for growing your EQ in community. Some really salient points uh, that I think are very, very helpful. So, and I shared a couple stories as well uh, of, of my personal journey and why and how community has impacted my growth, my emotional growth. But again, five points. So if you haven't heard that episode yet, you may want to check it out. Some really neat stories and I think some powerful uh, salient points there. Also, if you'd like to sign up for our wait list for our uh, EQ membership uh, site and community, you can check that out at eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash the growth lab. eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash the growth lab. All right. We did church on Sunday in the park. We still have COVID ops going on. And so we did it outdoors in this park. Beautiful sunny day. Cool thing about being in Colorado, no humidity, which is awesome. There's, a, I want to say, 250, 300 days of sun in Colorado, which, which we absolutely love. And it was just myself and my daughter, our 12 year old daughter, because Kathy recently pulled out her back because of our awesome 
dog <laughs> is called the Tedster. His spiritual gift is actually disobedience. So this guy, we've had two shepherds, and now we've got this guy, and it is it is a very, very big difference. <laughs> In fact, it, oh, this is great. This is free tip. Free tip, y'all. If you, too, want, want help with your emotional intelligence, buy a golden doodle, y'all. <laughs> buy a golden doodle. If, if you want no emotional issues, man, get a German Shepherd. <laughs> That's free tacos right there for y'all. That's free tacos. Okay. So, absolutely, bam, great church service. We attend, it's called Fervent Church here in Colorado, and is awesome. Guy brought the skinny and came back and walked into the living room, and I saw my wife, and I said, hey, babe, how you doing? How you feeling? How many of y'all can read nonverbals? Can any of y'all read nonverbals? I could tell immediately my wife was not feeling it, right? She was not not happy, not a happy camper. And so I, I went pried a little bit deeper. Hey, babe, you know, what, what's up? What, what, you know, what's going on? What are you feeling? I mean, is it your back? Is it something else? And she said, well, you know, one of the things she said is, um, just how emotionally exhausting it is to have her back be in constant pain. And for those of y'all that have ever had back pain before can, you know, know that that's, you know, it's, 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 it can be pretty intense and, and it's, and it can be constant as well. And it is chronic pain or constant pain on this case. Thankfully she just threw her back out. So it's not, hasn't been like her whole life, but still, you know, it's, it's pretty intense over a period of time. It can be exhausting. And also, so she, so she shared how emotionally exhausting it was to have her back hurt, but also how emotionally painful it was to not have the ability to go on walks outside, you know, in this, in this beautiful area that we live in. There's no humidity. Again, we've got this amazing front row seat to the Rocky Mountains. It's absolutely beautiful. And, and literally, that's, that's part of her therapy. I mean, it's really it's, it's, it's amazing. It's very cathartic to be able to do that. So not to, to sort of not be able to do that is frustrating to say the least. And it's, and it's how I feel too, from with my jujitsu classes, my, I, I go to prime jujitsu and my jujitsu class is same. It's very cathartic for me. Very, I'm not a competitive or big baller jujitsu guy, but it's, it's still for me, even though I'm not a big baller jits guy, it's still very cathartic for me for a number of different reasons. And this is where we were literally at on Sunday. And another little minor detail, right? We've got the homeschooling, you know, we, we homeschool with classical conversations and, you know, with all the COVID stuff, that's all right. What the, the states and the governor governors and the, you know, all these different folks are all that is all up in there, right? Every day, it seems like new stuff is coming out on that. And, and we're in the middle of launching a whole new business. And we've, we've been a part of, of, of probably over 10 different startups now and you all know, I mean, almost like you can almost guarantee the two emotions that the majority of entrepreneurs feel are feeling at any given time, exhaustion and overwhelming, <laughs> right? Are those two emotions. And so we had all these big things going on. And so, so, and, and here's some things to consider. And remember, before I share with you some more details about our conversation, Kathy's and my conversation. So we've been entrepreneurs and business owners for over 20 years. So this is not our first rodeo. We've been doing it 20 years and again, probably our 10th, 11th, 12th business venture. So again, not newbies. This isn't our first rodeo. We've been, yeah, so a number of different things. Many of our businesses have failed. There have been some that have been successful. In one, we were in uh, uh, one of them, we reached a, a top 1% out of a hundreds of thousands of folks in, the, in that industry. We're in the middle of launching, again, a new, entirely new business where, again, with this, helping entrepreneurs grow their emotional intelligence to help grow their bottom line. And here's where we were literally on Sunday. So again, this isn't weeks ago, months ago story. This is literally Sunday and even bled into today. I mean, m you know, the last, you know, last, last couple of days here frustrated, down in the dumps, the old dumpy diapers, if y'all have seen the movie Trolls, <laughs> that's where I got that term from, 
our, some of our marketing efforts efforts haven't been working. Some of our, our freebie lead magnet hasn't been working. Email list hasn't been growing that much. We're questioning our efforts. We're questioning our, our business. Doubting finances. It's not like we have millions to throw at whatever challenge we have. You guys know, you know, anytime you're in the startup phase, a lot of times many entrepreneurs have to bootstrap it. And so, you know, it's emotional, a lot of big emotions in running a business, a lot of big emotions. We were both kind of down at the same time. So, which we normally don't try to do. Normally we like to have at least one of us up at any given moment. If I'm down, she's up. If she's down, I'm up. Well, in this case, both of us were kind of dumpy diapers and we're exhausted. Again, how many entrepreneurs aren't? We're overwhelmed. And if, again, for all you entrepreneurs out there, that's like par for the, the course. That's part of being an entrepreneur, I, I would almost argue. Thankfully, this is a huge victory though. Thankfully, because in times past pre-EQ development, I would have been shut down. A trigger for me is when I'm overwhelmed, I completely shut down. Like literally, I need to take a nap. I need to go to sleep. I need to, I, I need to uh, avoid and stuff my emotions. Stuff and avoid, right? Danger, Will Robinson for all my, whatever that show is called. Like that's what happens when I get started to go overwhelmed. I hear this little danger, Will Robinson, and it's time to shut everything down. That was my emotional coping mechanism. So thankfully, as a result of my EQ growth and development, I'm, I, I have not been shutting down, which is a huge blessing. And the other thing that I used to do is that I would tie our in the moment business success or failure to my self-worth and my value. So that if we were up, oh man, look how valuable and all the stuff I am. If, if we were getting crushed, guess what? Oh man, I'm terrible, I'm a loser, I'm a waste of skin, and I've done lots of episodes and videos and stuff on that. And so thankfully, my where we are at in business at any given moment is not a reflection of my self-worth or value anymore. That's a huge, huge victory for me in my emotional growth and emotional journey. And think about, how think about the value of that alone. If I didn't even continue on the value of, of not attaching my self-worth or identity to my business, which I think many entrepreneurs do. And I've heard this analogy. I like this analogy is if you take a hundred dollar bill and there's probably some neat parable that I could share it, but I'm going to make it quick. You, you take a hundred dollar bill and you crumple it up maybe when your business is in a valley or maybe even you're in a valley, does the value of that $100 change just because it's crumpled up? No, it's still $100. The value of that 100 does not change just because it's crumpled up. Same thing with you. Even though you may be feeling down, maybe in a valley, lots of emotions going on, a lot of people, you know, lots of, of, of chaos, honestly, lots of, right? And, 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 and that's tough, right? That's tough. Most people are wired to have stability in, in, in their environments. Well, we're in an environment right now where there's not a lot of stability going on. And so if you can be emotionally stable amidst a chaotic environment, that chaotic environment is going to have less impact on you. That's also free tacos because that's not in, that's not in my notes here. Okay, so you saw where we were at, this valley, right? Lots of emotions, big emotions, doubting, questioning, what are we doing? And remember, we're not newbies in the entrepreneur. We, we've had multiple combat tours in entrepreneurship, all right? So this is not our first business rodeo, but here we were. In spite of all our experience, all the businesses that we've done and been a part of, all this kind of stuff, we're still sucking wind like a Kirby vacuum. Now, here's the cool thing. The, another interesting point to realize between you and your spouse, you and your business partner, or part, maybe you've got multiple business partners, if you've got joint venture, or, you know, other, your co fellow companies that you're involved with, realize that you, you, we all process our emotions differently. Our EQs are different. 
our experiences are different, our maturity is different, our, all these different things are different, our personalities are different, our, our grids that we see things through the world, right, is different, right, our personality, right, all these different grids, right, our strengths, all these different things impact how we view situations. And so, Kathy and I, what's been fascinating is how different Kathy and I view these different scenarios, but we're in the same, we're, we're all experiencing, Kathy and I are experiencing the same thing, but processing our emotions very differently. Fascinating, but that's okay. It's okay for you to, to process d- your emotions differently. The goal is growth, not to, to plateau in, 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 how, you know, in your emotional journey. You want to, you want progress. Okay. Here are some questions that we asked ourselves. Now you may want to jot these down. You know, if you're driving, maybe go back and play this again later or whatever. But here's some questions that we asked ourselves to work through this valley that we were in literally just the other day. Number one, and this was so funny. You want to talk about a mind screw. Try processing emotions and feelings, running a business that's about emotional intelligence. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, man, half the time I'm like, what are we doing, man? What is going on? Number one, are we going about this business from an emotionally healthy perspective? Number one, are we going about this business from an emotionally healthy perspective? Number two, are we, another way to ask kind of the same question, are we being emotionally healthy building this new business venture? Are we being emotionally healthy building this new business venture? Number three, is this becoming an idol in our lives? Is this new business venture becoming an idol in our lives? And and, and, and what's what's crazy is that I've, 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 got an amazing spiritual gift of being able to make just about anything an idol in my life. And I'm, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Like I, I, that's how I've got to be very careful because I, you know, I I can, man, I can make it just about anything become an idol in my life. So I've got to be very careful about that. So another one, and this is just a personal one for us. Are we involving God in this journey? Next question. How are we involving God in this journey? Or we say, hey, God, I got this. I don't need you, man. Like, just, you know, come to the rescue if I need help. But otherwise, like, stay out of the picture, right? Like, how would you feel? So next one, is there a real need for the content that we have for this whole concept of emotional growth or emotional intelligence as it applies to, in this case, entrepreneurship? Next question, Is there a real need for the lessons God is teaching us about our own emotional journey as entrepreneurs? Is there a real need for the lessons God is teaching us about our own emotional growth journey as entrepreneurs? Next one, is there real value in the lessons we're learning about our emotional growth journey as entrepreneurs? Is there real value? In the lessons. Now, again, we're as these are the questions that we were asking ourselves yesterday, and even some today, and a couple days ago. This is this is fresh off the press, y'all. This is real time stuff. Next one, what kind? And see, you can craft these store these these questions. You can manipulate these questions to match your scenario, to match your business, to match your thing that you're working through and working on. Next one, is there real value? Okay, I already said that one, there's a real value. What kind of feedback and stories have we heard from those that are listening to our podcast? In fact, a guy named Sean, thank you so much, Sean. He just said, I was just thinking about you. Love your live streams. Thank you so much, Sean. Totally appreciate that. So that's a good example, right? What kind of, that was great timing, by the way. (laughs) That was not even planned. What kind of feedback or stories have we heard from those listening to our podcast, right? Are they, are they real lessons? Are they real? Is it real feedback? Is it, are people, right? So that's, that's, I don't want to get ahead of myself. What kind of feedback and stories have we heard from those that we have been directly coaching about the impact that emotional growth has had in their lives personally and professionally. Have we gotten any feedback? 
what kind of feedback and stories have we received from those that were directly coaching uh, uh, about the impact that, that their emotional growth journey has had in their lives? Have our lives, this is good too, have our lives been transformed by our own emotional growth journey as entrepreneurs? Like, or is this just like, we're, we're talking about some concept that has no relevancy to our own life, which obviously is not true. Cause I just shared a couple big ones early on in this, in this, in, in this uh, series, in this episode here. So have our lives been transformed by our own emotional growth journey as entrepreneurs? Next one, have others' lives been transformed by their own emotional growth journey? And, and of course, man, was, here's the blessing. So with some of those questions, we were able to answer with authority. There's no doubt that, that this emotional growth journey honestly has, aside from our faith, has had the greatest impact in our lives personally and professionally than anything else in my entire life. And I've read hundreds of books on leadership, personal growth, self-development, all that stuff. Nothing has had the impact in my life that emotional growth has outside of my, outside of my faith. Now, so how did this all, but, but even with that being said, how did this all end? How, you know, how did this all end? One big lesson, okay, this is big. One big lesson that we, that, that we gleaned from this valley is that we allowed ourselves, so this is huge, y'all, that we allowed ourselves the freedom, permission, patience, and grace to feel those big negative emotions before again i've got you know and i'm i'm saying this next statement jokingly i've got multiple phd's in stuffing and avoiding right if if you want lessons in how to stuff and avoid your feelings man i have been doing that for a long time <laughs> as long as chuck chuck taylor's have been around <laughs> some of you are like what's chuck taylor don't don't sweat it so Give yourself the freedom, the permission, the grace, the space, the patience to feel those negative emotions that you are going to feel in, 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 in being an entrepreneur. Next one. How else did this end? With us still asking questions and still feeling multiple emotions. It wasn't, honestly, it wasn't like we had this big giant bolt of clarity and the lightning bolt came down from God and the neon lights like this is what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it and when you're supposed to do it. And all. no, it wasn't, it wasn't that at all. There's still a ton of questions that we've got to ask. There's still a lot of emotions that we're processing, but thankfully we were able to answer some of those questions with authority based on our own journey. In fact, check this out. You ready? This is raw y'all. This is, I'm telling you, this is, transparency. One of the comments that Kathy made, she said, and, and I'm telling you, this is super, <laughs> this is very transparent. She said, Noble, one, one of the other issues that I have is I don't feel confident in this journey. I don't feel confident in, in, in this whole area of EQ. And, and I, and I was like, wow, that's a great, that's a great insight and great realization and I said, babe, I think we've been pretty transparent this whole journey, all 50 episodes so far that we, we are not PhDs in emotional intelligence. I am not a, you know, neither one of us are counselors or, or psychologists or psychiatrists or, or anything else. Family counselors, like we have no, none of that stuff. We are just entrepreneurs who are going through our own emotional growth journey that have very real stories of growth and change and transformation as a result of our own emotional growth journey as entrepreneurs. And that I am confident in. I, I Again, I don't have a PhD in EQ and all this fancy pantsy stuff. I have experienced personal growth, change and transformation as a result of my own emotional growth and as a result of our own emotional intelligence going up. And that, again, I am confident in. 
And, and I'm confident in sharing that story with you all, sharing that those points and those lessons with you guys because it's real. And again, it's raw. Again, being super real with you guys. Now, here's another big lesson. I'm so thankful that, again, this is for, for all you entrepreneurs out there, that our conversation, I'm thankful that, that we have enough respect with each other and enough safety with each other to have these conversations about some of these big emotions and that we're letting each other feel whatever we're feeling without freaking out. When she said, oh man, no, but man, I'm just, you know, I don't have confidence in, in this whole EQ space and I'm, I'm feeling down. I'm feeling bummed out. I'm feeling discouraged. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. We just let each other express that stuff and feel it without freaking out. No. Oh, cause again, I'm telling y'all three, four, five years ago, I would have been freaking out. I would, I'm telling, I'm be honest with you. Now we're just holding space for each other. We're allowing, I'm allowing her to feel that stuff and I'm still in there with her, you know, and, and vice versa. We're not trying to fix anything. Well, hey, babe, you know, if, let me just give you the three solutions and if you just do these three things and guess what, you won't be feeling that way anymore. None of that, that's what I used to do. I'm not doing that anymore, thankfully. Can I get a witness on that one? A little testimony. I'm, I'm not offering any solutions. I'm not trying to fix anything. I'm just letting her emote. I'm letting her feel. And I'm occupying, occupying that same space with her and vice versa. As we're sorting out these emotions, here's the cool thing. This is another huge lesson. As we're sorting out our emotions in these different areas, solutions are coming. And we're praying, right, for us. Again, our background, we're Christians. So we're, we're praying, you know, all the way through this journey as well. So as we're praying and we're allowing ourselves to feel these emotions and sort out these emotions and express these emotions safely and listening safely and occupying space safely, solutions are coming. But here's the deal. Not, this is huge, y'all. This is huge because this was me. This next thing was me. Not allowing yourself the freedom and, and permission and patience to feel and emote can cause emotional paralysis, which can lead to ineffective decision making. It's almost like making decisions blindly when you when, when I all my years of stuffing and avoiding emotions was literally like like putting a blindfold over my eyes and not allowing myself to, to see if you will, that dynamic or that whole aspect that all of us have. Every one of us has emotions and feelings. Even my all my unemotional homies out there, all my logical process system oriented thinkers and stuff, even you, right? We all have emotions and feelings. So not allowing yourself to feel or emote or process can lead to emotional paralysis. Again, which can lead to ineffective decision making. What are your emotions telling you? They are signals and signs to inform, not to control you. Now that's, the, that's not the goal. Some of you are like, oh snap, I don't want to allow myself to feel or process my emotions because then they'll take over. That's not the goal either, right? So the goal is for, for your emotions and feelings to not control you, but to inform you. That's why we need to grow, you know, build our emotional growth muscles, if you will. They're like hidden code in your software, trying to inform and illuminate just so we, it, it, so for us, it's like we need to learn how to read that secret code of emotions. We need to learn how to read it. What's this, what are our emotions telling us? What, what's, what's going on? What, what is my spouse's emotions telling us? What are our business partner's emotions telling us? What are our children's emotions telling us? What's the root of that emotion, right? So anyway, so that, that's another, another thing there to think about. So we need to learn how to read that code, that secret code, if you will, of emotions and feelings, not ignore that code. So ask yourself some of those above questions along your journey. Allow yourself to feel and process some of those emotions. Allow your spouse or business partner to feel and process some of those emotions safely, 
That's huge. Safely without offering any solutions, just listening and occupying the same space and, and allow your spouse, business partner, whatever, fill in the blank, to, to feel and emote and express and you be in that same space with them safely. Even though it may be uncomfortable and man, these are tough emotions and big emotions and intense emotions, just be available, be present, be an active listener is also huge. And, and, and ask each other, this is another big one, ask each other some high quality questions to help each other to process. Can, can you go a little bit deeper on that for me? Can you unpack that for me? Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? So let me see if I'm understanding you correctly. So what, what, what I'm understanding you saying is, boom. So let me see. So the, the emotion that you're feeling is, boom, right? Give a back brief. That shows that you're actively listening and involved in the conversation and really ask some good questions because that can help each other process and evaluate what those emotions are and how to deal with them and what those emotions are telling you or trying to tell you and what the sources and the the roots are of those emotions. Please rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast, EQ for Entrepreneurs, YouTube channel, and Facebook group. Again, visit eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash the growth lab to join the waiting list for upcoming EQ membership community. We love helping you navigate the emotional journey of running your business and your life by helping you grow your emotional awareness and emotional intelligence.